Shalom, and welcome back to B'nai Noach Academy, Thoughts on Life. Please remember to hit the like button, to subscribe, most importantly, to share this insight and inspiration with friends and family. So on a recent class titled, Are Men Greater Than Women?, in which we explained that the answer is no, men aren't greater than women, women aren't greater than men. They're all equal. In fact, they were created together and equal, just each has their own specific or I should say exclusive role. So one of the viewers in the comments asked the following question. Rabbi, if this is so, then what is the meaning of Genesis 16? Quote, unto woman, he said, I will greatly multiply this, uh, thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow you shall be, uh, bring forth children and thy desire shall be to your husband, but he will rule over you, over thee. So, first of all, when we read words in the Torah, especially when you're reading a translation, which is telling you that you're relying on someone's understanding, someone's interpretation of the Torah. At best, one should try to read the original text. I'm not saying that this is distorted. This is more or less precisely what the Torah is saying. But even when you do read the original text, one needs to really understand what it's telling us. Well, we have at our service and I should say privilege, we have one of the most important commentaries in the Torah, which basically translates everything into practical words. And that is the translation of Rashi. Rashi is an acronym for Rabbi Shlomo Yitzchaki. Rabbi Shlomo, the son of Yitzchak. Rab Rashi explains what the verse is saying. Of course, based on the sources, this is not, you know, his own invention. Rashi explains that what God was saying to her, what well, you're going to bear children with hardship. There is going to be a lot of pain involved. Now, if there's pain involved, what is the human natural instinct when you know something is painful. You do whatever possible to avoid it. You try your best to get away from it, right? If something, and especially if anybody knows anything about the brain, the way the brain works, when somebody has had a bad experience, even without cognitively being aware of that experience coming up again, the brain itself automatically, the amygdala, jumps away from it. It opposes it because the brain already has been set that this thing is not good for me. This thing hurts. This thing brings pain. Thus, it would make sense that women would not want to have children after this curse. And that's why God says, your desire will be to your husband. That's the way God made it. However, at the same time, he will control you. It does not mean that he will control you in everything or that he's better than you. But in this case, although your desire will be to him and you cannot, so to speak, help yourself, still that will not, so to speak, force him in any way or commit him and still that will be a sense of a control. That doesn't mean the man is greater. It doesn't mean the man is better. It's just God was stating her a fact. God was telling her what things will be like. In fact, if you think about it, God was doing a great service, I should say, or I should say kindness better, to the human being by disclosing this. Because once this was meant to be, this was meant to happen, it's going to happen. But imagine when something's happening and you don't understand what's happening. That is very painful. That is torturous. Once you understand what's happening, once you know what's going to be, it takes away a lot of the pain because it makes sense on some level. I mean, imagine somebody wakes up in the morning and they find themselves strapped to a bed with tubes and needles coming out and, and, and surgeons. What's going on here? It becomes very scary. They're going to panic. They might even go into shock. And who knows what kind of detrimental things can happen to them and their health. But if the person sat down with the doctor before, beforehand, that is, 
And the doctor explains, you're going to have a surgery. We're going to do prep. We're going to put in, you know, some tubes. We're going to put in, you know, uh, a line. We're going to put in some IV. And then we're going to, you know, do the surgery. We're going to put you to sleep. It's not as painful. It's not as scary. So what God was doing, he was saying to the woman factually what's going to happen, how she is going to experience life until the end of days when Mashiach comes. This will be reversed. The pain will go away. All the negativity will go away and so on. In fact, being that I mentioned the coming of Mashiach, I want you to take a look in Genesis chapter 21, verse 12. God says to Abraham, when Abraham was hesitant to listen to his wife, and for obvious reasons, he was hesitant to listen to Sarah. When she says to him, get rid of this, get rid of Yishmael, get rid of this wayward son of yours. It wasn't her son, it was his son. It was difficult for him, it was his son. And he still had hopes for him. Especially, not only as a father, but Abraham being the kind man that he was. He didn't want to just cast him away. And what does God say to him? Everything, meaning anything, that Sarah tells you, you listen to her. Now, we know Abraham was a prophet. God told him this, so he spoke to God. And yet God's telling him, I want you to know something, mister. Your wife is greater than you. Yeah, you have prophecy. Yeah, you know what's going on. But your wife knows even more. In fact, the Talmud tells us that there were a few throughout history that, quote, tasted, meaning they had a little, little sampling of what will be when Mashiach comes. And that is that the role of the women then will be fully exposed and fully revealed. And everyone will see that the woman indeed is greater than the man. Now it may appear as if the men play a greater role or more important role or more vital role. But when Mashiach comes, we'll actually see how the woman is greater.